how to teach math. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you some foundational principles that shape the way I teach math in my homeschool. I hope that these principles are helpful for you as you think about developing your own philosophy of math education and practice of math education in your homeschool. Begin with the idea that math is inherently interesting and it is inherently worth learning. Especially for those of us who have the privilege of beginning homeschool with young learners who have no other school or math experience, this can be very easy. Whether or not you are coming into math experience with memory, with bad memories from your own school years, I strongly recommend that when introducing math education to your child, that you don't communicate any kind of idea that this is really hard or this is boring or a lot of people don't like to do this. Because yes, while I know that math has this reputation as being something that a lot of people don't really like, that a lot of people feel very uncomfortable with or they find it boring, there's actually no inherent reason why that needs to be the case. Especially for those of us who are homeschooling, who are beginning with young, young children, we should be introducing math with the same exuberance and excitement that we bring to any subject that is worth learning. Math is an incredible part of God's creation and learning about it is, can be just as exciting as learning about science or learning about art or any other thing that makes your heart, <laughs> makes your heart beat a little faster. Math actually is inherently interesting and I seek to communicate that from the very day one when we first start exploring numbers with my young children. Viewing math as an incredible part of God's creation and treating it as such, instead of viewing it as just a boring subject that we have to do for some reason, it totally transforms the math learning experience. Second principle, do not limit yourself to one math resource. For some reason, in the subject of math, a lot of people want to do this. One of my most asked questions in email, in DMs, in the comments is, if you were going to use just one math curriculum, which one would you choose? And my answer is, I wouldn't do that. Honestly, um, limiting myself to one math resource just isn't a path that I would go down. I don't think it would be beneficial to my children's math experience. You don't necessarily need to use multiple full math curriculums the way that I do, um, but I, I do want you to think broadly about the math experience and don't just put math in its little math box and we're gonna use math you see and that's gonna check off our math box experience. We should be thinking widely and thinking about the feast when it comes to math as well. You can use math curriculum. You can use interesting math books to read aloud or have your children read. You can use math videos. You can use math games. You can use math experiences and math challenges that get hands on. There are so many ways to incorporate math. So I do encourage you to think about melding different things together. Different curriculums and different resources have very different strengths and they have different approaches. So often you can get the meatiest and the richest math experience by combining the strengths of different resources. Now, I don't say this to overcomplicate things or make you think that you need to over plan how you're going to combine different resources. I really don't do this in any kind of complicated way. Variety is essential to a rich math education. So I encourage you not just to think about progress upwards on a linear slope of math, but to think about a broad math education and about different resources that can help you achieve that broad math education. Number three, prioritize strong number sense and mathematical reasoning skills, but don't totally neglect fact memorization. If our students can develop a very strong number sense and solid mathematical reasoning skills, solid mental math skills in the early years, those are skills that will pay off for a lifetime. If a child doesn't yet understand why six times six equals 36, we have not yet reached the stage where we should really be focusing on memorizing our times tables. 
Now, there can be exceptions to this general rule depending on individual student needs. There will be children who struggle very severely um, with mathematical reasoning, who just struggle to be able to picture the math. Um, and for these students who have deep struggles with math, you may need to move on to just memorizing in order for them to progress. So this is not a rule without exceptions, but this is a general principle which is helpful for most students. Typically, we want to begin by building a solid, deep understanding of mathematical processes and then move on to fact memorization. And why do we want our student to memorize the facts? Because memorization allows for speed. Yes, it's great if our child can do these mental calculations to figure out the problems, but as they get into more advanced math, they're going to get into more complex multi-step equations and having all your basic facts for addition, subtraction, multiplication, division memorized is going to very much help them to be able to synthesize all the steps that they need to do, all the information they need to have to solve more complex questions in a timely fashion. Memorization of basic facts allows children to solve more complicated problems without getting bogged down in calculating all the equations. Number four, use manipulatives generously. I often hear that parents don't really want to use manipulatives during math because they can get messy, they can be tough to keep track of. And here, I do recommend that you are very organized in your homeschool, that you keep math manipulatives specifically for math time, that you give them a designated spot and that they stay in that designated spot. I highly encourage being organized in your homeschool. Um, but please, especially in these early years, um, using moving parts, using manipulatives, using visuals can really yield great fruit um, as your children progress in their math skills. I do not recommend skipping out on manipulatives and trying to go for just the workbook, no teacher's manual, no nothing, trying to keep it simple because these early years of math are so important for laying down a strong foundation that I feel like they are truly worth the hassle. And do remember that visuals do not always have to be manipulatives. Visuals can be very useful even if we don't actually have moving parts. You can be drawing pictures, you can be pointing to things around the room. Using visuals in math is incredibly helpful and I encourage you not to skip that step. And this is perhaps a side note, but I've noticed so many parents want math that is just a workbook, that doesn't require them to open up a teacher's guide, that doesn't require them to do teaching activities. And yes, I know you're busy. I am right there with you in the trenches of homeschooling with small children. I'm there with you. I just want to throw in a little vote of confidence for teaching math with a teacher's manual for teaching math with activities and manipulatives. I really feel that in most cases, they are worth the hassle. <laughs> they are worth the time and the effort. This is the foundation that a lifetime of math calculations and a lifetime of a relationship with math will be built on. So I believe math is worth more than just the workbook. Number five, from the very beginning, teach your child to write down their work, always, every time. If you have a child who is just naturally very quick at math, they may push back on writing down their work and writing down their equations. Don't let them get away with this. Make this a requirement in math from the very beginning. The further you go in math, and these kids who are very quick at math will probably go very far, but the further you go in math, the more important it will be to be able to follow the path of the equations and follow the path of the problem solving that led you to the eventual answer. Make writing down the equation and writing down the work a requirement for your children even when they are young so that they can develop this habit for a lifetime of strong math solving skills. Number six, point out real life applications of what you are learning about. And here I don't mean do this all the time because that can get kind of annoying. But if your child's in the stage where they're learning how to write dollars and cents correctly, point out the price tags at the store or the prices on a menu at a restaurant. When you're cooking, point out the fractions labeled on your measuring cups or the temperature gauge on your oven when they're learning about degrees. We don't need elaborate activities or special studies to connect math to everyday life because math is so obviously and deeply connected to our everyday lives. But in the very beginning, it might be helpful to be pointing out these connections to our young children who might not at first make the leap to what they were learning about in math and what they're seeing in the real world. Number seven, be consistent and communicate consistent expectations. 
Working on math consistently will allow you to make so much more progress. I would much rather spend five minutes a day working on mastering times tables than 20 minutes once a week and then come back to it the next week. If you do that, you're gonna end up spinning your wheels in the same spot every week. Short, consistent daily sessions will really help you to make progress. In addition, being clear and consistent about your own expectations will reduce any battles or friction. Don't make it okay to turn in sloppy work one day and then the next day decide, no, I'm gonna make a stand right here because it's getting too far, it's going way too sloppy. Be consistent about requiring neat answers, neat written work. When children are in the habit of writing neatly, it becomes much easier for them to continue to write neatly. And the final tip that I wanna share for teaching math is that if your child is working independently, if they're at the stage where they're working on their math, doing all their problems without you sitting right next to them, make sure that their work is checked and corrected daily. There is no point to a student solving math problems if they are not being checked and corrected. It needs to be happening regularly, ideally every single day that they're doing math, you are sitting down and going over those math problems and there are more and less effective methods of checking and correcting math. I do not recommend going through all the problems yourself and writing down the correct answers for all the ones they got wrong. That's not useful. The, <laughs> the ideal way for you to correct math is to go through their page with the teacher's guide if you need one. <laughs> Once they're past around fourth grade level, you'll probably start to need one. Um, going through, checking them. If they get one wrong, don't write down the correct answer. Just circle it. Ideally, hand the book back to your child and see if they are able to identify what they got wrong in that problem. Quite a few times, they probably will be able to quickly identify, oh, I forgot this step, oh, I needed to do this. And if they can identify it and resolve the problem and get it correct, that's great. There may be times when they look at the problem and they're like, yeah, I'm lost. I don't know what I was doing there. I didn't really understand the concept and then work through problem solving that problem together as a joint process. That approach is going to lead to much more progress than if you're simply going through on your own and writing down, oh, they got this many wrong. They don't really care how many they got wrong. We care, are they able to figure out how to solve those problems correctly? All right, I hope that this video was helpful and got you thinking about how to teach math effectively in your homeschool. If you have any questions for me or if you have any comments with strategies that have been really effective in your homeschool, leave me some comments down below. And you can check out another video of mine for our favorite math resources that we use in our family. I will link to that in the description. See you later, bye.